So as you can see over here, I do have my FT891 set up right in here. I've also got it connected to the FC50 antenna tuner by Yesu. You can use a different antenna tuner. Uh, just make sure it matches up properly. In the shack configuration, I use the FC50. Now I've got everything connected up except for this cable right over here. And that's gonna have to wait till a little bit later. But as it is right now, is that all you got? This is what we got. The first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is download a few items from the Yesu website. And go there, come up here to products, select HF transceivers and amplifiers, then pick the 891. Now we're coming here to files. The first thing that you wanna download is right here, it's the FT891 operating manual. This is a PDF version of the manual that you actually received with the rig. Now I want to go to the advanced manual right here, FT891 advanced manual. This has a lot more information in it. So we'll just wait for that to download. And we're going to come down here toward the bottom. And I want to download the FT891 USB driver, virtual COM port driver, Windows 11 and 10. The next thing I want you to download is this 891 firmware update manual. And this is going to take you step by step if you ever need to update your firmware. And the next one is this one right here. It's the FT891 current firmware, including update main, DSP, and panel. This came out on December 26, 2022. So you're probably already updated. Downloading, 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 downloading. And let's just check the firmware information for this 1226.22. And this is going to update your main firmware to 110, your DSP firmware to version 2-05, and your panel firmware version to 101. Now we're going to install our driver. This is something that you can do without the rig. If you have an 891 on order and it's on the way, you can go ahead and do this to your computer at any time. As I pointed out before, there is no connection between the computer and your 891 at this time. I'm going to go to my folders, my file, and this is my universal Windows driver. I'm going to click on that and click Extract All. I just extract it right to my download folder. And what you want to find is this S-I-L-A-B-S-E-R, which is Silicone Labs Serial. And I'm going to right click on that and click Install. And I'm going to go through this. I'm going to go OK. And its operation is completed. Now that we've got our driver installed on our computer, now we have to connect up our rig. My power supply is not turned on, nor is my rig turned on. I'm going to bring up our device manager, and you'll notice I have nothing plugged in to my computer right now. Now, with the rig turned off and the power supply turned off, I'm going to plug in our USB into the port in the back, and you'll see that I now have my ports, common LPT, showed up here. And I have got an enhanced port, which you're going to use most often, and a standard port, which you will find useful occasionally. Now I'm going to turn on my power supply and turn on my rig, and we're going to set our bit rate. I'm going to press and hold the F key. That is going to bring up my menus. And I'm going to use my multifunction knob. We want to go to 506 which is in our general area. The cat rate I currently have set for 19200. You can press the multifunction knob and select a different value if you want. And I like 19200, so that's what's there. The default on the cat timeout timer is 10 milliseconds. Uh, I like to increase that up to the next step up, which is 100 milliseconds. Our CAT RTS is di currently disabled. I'm going to press my function key and I'm going to come here to my enhanced COM port, 
court settings and I have that set to 19200. And we'll set the same thing for our standard. That's at 9600, so we'll change that to 19200. At this point, your rig is ready to send commands back and forth. Now there's one more thing that I want to do. I want to press my function key and hold it. And we're going to go all the way down to the bottom. And you'll see right here we have our firmware versions. These are what's currently installed. And just like it said, these are the latest versions of our firmware. So we don't need to update them at all. This is also where you would do your reset. I'm going to press the function key, which takes it out to our regular function. If I just give it a quick function, push, you get all kinds of quick access functions that we will go through in later videos. Before we put a bow on this, I really need to apologize to y'all. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Since recording the very first part of this video, I've been sick. I was starting to feel sick when I recorded the first part. And in the middle parts, you could probably hear it in my voice. And I'm just now coming out of it. Long story short, I'm feeling better now. And probably in another week, it'll be clear. But I felt good enough now to actually record this final part. And in this final part, I want to talk about some accessories that you're going to need to use with the FT891 to do certain modes and things like that. The first one, and this will be the subject of my next video, so I won't get too deep into it, is a microphone. This is the microphone that comes with the rig. I'll put a little information right up here about it, and this is right from the owner's manual. Now on the back, one thing that a lot of people miss is there's a little switch. It's got a position one and a position two. What does this light switch do? Breaking it down, Position one is when you're in the rag chew mode. Position two is if you are DX hunting, working in contest, stuff like that. So keep that in mind. Also, I want to point out how to use this microphone. A lot of people think you bring it right up in front of your face and talk. That's not the best way to do it. What's the best way to go? What you want to do is hold it about an inch or two in front of your face and speak over the microphone, which is a nice handy place to hold it. And what this will prevent is the harsh consonants, the K's and the solid C's, and especially the popping P's. You're gonna get a loud pop and it's, it's not gonna sound good over the air. The way you install this on your radio is not too difficult, but the microphone port on this end is a little hidden. Let me reposition my camera and I'll show you how that happens. On top of the radio, you'll notice these little indicator arrows. Over on this side, there's a, a little button. You push that back and you slide the front panel over to the left. That loosens it. And at this point, I'm gonna turn my rig off and just set that up there. The microphone plugs in using the eight pin modular collection and it's going to slide with the little clip part toward the bottom, all the way in the back here, and click it in. And it's, it's in there nice and good now. Now you want to route the microphone through this little notch that's over on the side. And we can just set the microphone down and we'll put the rig back together. Make sure that this, that's done correctly, all right. So you see the little arrow here the little arrow there, that's going to line up with this arrow on the left. And there's another one over here. So you just put it on, snug it in, and slide it to the right. And that's how you install the microphone. I'll go ahead and turn my rig back on. Speaking of microphones, there are a number of options that you have. You can use the M90, which is a Yesu microphone. I really like this. There are other accessory microphones in the Yesu catalog. You can also go to Heil, and Heil has single-sided and double-sided. So just make sure you get the right adapter cable to go with it. And there are other manufacturers that make them. Do a search, you can find something that'll work well for you. Now, the next thing that you wanna do, and you might notice right down here, 
This is my power supply. And just brief on power supply. Don't go cheap on the power supply. Don't go online. Don't go onto Amazon and find the cheapest DC power supply you can find. Use a good, reliable one. The one I recommend is the Astron power supply. And you can pick those up. HRO, DX Engineering. They're going to cost you a little bit, but they are very high quality. When you are pulling full power into the rig, you're going to be drawing about 23 amps. Don't buy a 25 amp power supply. Get yourself with a little extra space over and above that. When the manufacturer says it's a 25 amp power supply, that means momentary power, not long-term power. So you want to get something 30 or higher. A lot of mine are 50 amps and I've got, I've got these Astrons for all of my rigs. Now the exception to the buying the 25 amp one, 25 amp Astron power supply is great for running a mobile VHF UHF rig in your shack because it's only drawing 12 ish amps on the peak. Now you might notice down here, I've got my information for my rig right here. It's just a Dymo labeler and this is the one I use. I, I recommend you get one of these, especially if you have multiple radios because I switch between all of my radios and I'll forget what the COM port is, what the speed is, uh, things like that. So I put that information right on the front of the power supply, easy to get to. but. That's just another recommendation from your Uncle Tom. Thanks for the weird and unsolicited advice. Now, if you want to do CW, you're going to need a key. I use Vibraplex keyers. They are well made. They will last you a lifetime. And the plug for it comes separately. It wires here into the back and it shows you color coding and how to wire everything. But some of them use these smaller tip ring sleeves. Some of them use the quarter inch tip ring sleeves. Buy the associated plug that goes with yours or make your own. You'll find these, for example, on the Vibraplex site. If you want to automate, in other words, have your computer send your Morse code for you, which is very doable using FL Digi, HRD, my contesting, uh, N3FJP software will trigger a wind keyer. The wind keyer USB is what I use and it comes with four memories and also these memories are programmable through a free software package that's on the WinKey USB site. So I recommend getting this or something like this. You'll note this is a, uses the K1EL chip and the K1EL chip is found in a lot of other rig runner software. You can use this or any of those other things as well. Now, if you're like me, having a speaker up on top is fantastic for a mobile operation because the sound comes out, bounces off my windshield and comes straight at me. However, in a shack environment, I like to have a front facing speaker. It's mostly to do with my ears, but any front facing speaker. Now, Yesu has customized speakers for all of their radios, except for the 891 and the other smaller, more mobile remote operation rigs. This is one that I use on this radio. I picked this one up 20 years ago. Uh, to give you an idea, it's a Radio Shack. And I know I'm dating myself here. I probably spent eight bucks on it and it works fine. And it just I just set it right up here, plug it into the external speaker jack on the back and you're golden. If you want to do digital modes, the 891 does not have an internal sound card on it. So you're not gonna be able to go use a codec unless you plug in an external sound card. This is the external sound card that I recommend and use. Uh, it's a signal link USB and it will come with a specific cable that goes with it. So you have to pick out your cable. It also comes with uh, jumper wires because inside of here there are jumper wires. Now all of this I'm going to get more in depth when I do the how to use FT8 and FT4 on the 891. Now finally, Yesu has a fantastic little remote control. I can use this on any of my Yesu rigs. It is the Yesu FH2 and it's got a space that plugs into the back. It's called REM for remote. Between this and your radio, you can pre-program voice messages 
and CW messages and then just play them back. So it's, it's a real handy little thing to have. Cost about uh, 90 bucks and uh, it's something that anytime I order a Yesu rig, I grab one of these. Now I'm sure there are other accessories you can get. However, I do recommend that if you're going to buy this rig and say, well, I will just accessorize up, go ahead and pick yourself up another rig. If you're into the Yesu family, then a FT710, either AESS or field versions. Let me give you just my quick overview. I will do a more in-depth overview, but this rig was made as a mobile rig. That's where I usually use it. Right now, it's obviously out of my car and in my shack. However, on my car, I have an ATAS 120A antenna, which is a screwdriver antenna. It's a screwdriver. This will drive. I do not recommend this as a in-shack radio because if you're just getting it just to talk, that's fine. If you're ever going to want to go CW, well, you can do that pretty easily. If you want to be able to match your antenna, well, right there, you're already at the FT710 field and FT991A level. Mo money, mo money, <laughs> Thank mo you, money. John. If you want to do digital modes on the rig, now you're talking FTDX10. So you can move up and you can move up outside of Yesu as well. I've got an ICOM IC7300 and a Kenwood TS890S, both of which I absolutely love. I wouldn't mind checking out a Flex Radio or an Elecraft, uh, but that's something for the future. I'm retired, I'm on a fixed income, so I have to save up my pennies for a long time. And contrary to popular opinion, YouTube videos don't make me that much money. So with that, 73, and thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed putting it together, at least when I wasn't hacking and coughing. I also hope that if you're interested in the 891, you'll come back and check out the series that's going to follow this. Please remember to like, share, comment, and please consider subscribing to this channel. As always, I'm at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N, just like it says on the hat, and I am out. He's a good man, and I hope he feels better.